let's start with the, the film Doubt. Um, I'm interested in, in why you chose to take the role, because it's, it's quite a role. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have been crazy not to. Um, I, it was a very celebrated uh, part when it was a play. My friend Cherry Jones originated the part on Broadway, and um, I think they won a slew of Tonys, and the play won the Pulitzer Prize, and it was uh, quite a famous uh, production at home. And so when the film opportunity came around, uh, my first thought was I wanted to meet with uh, John Patrick Shanley and find out why Cherry wasn't doing it, <laughs> because I felt really bad about it that. And he said that uh, he had not directed the first production. It was directed by someone else. And he wanted to have his own shot at it. And he wanted to expand it and change it and, and do a different thing. So I was grateful for the, for the opportunity to talk to her. She was all right with it. So we went on. And, and the filming of it, I mean, um, what was it like working with Philip Seymour Hoffman? Because it's very much the two of you and yeah. so many of the scenes. Well, he's one of our great, great actors. Um, he's someone that he looks a certain way, but he doesn't ever behave the same way in each role. He's I intrepid in changing himself, and you're not really aware of how he does it, because it doesn't seem to come from the outside. It comes from the inside. And so I've known him for a long time. He played my son in The Seagull. I adore him, but I never know who's going to walk in the door, you know, when he's a new character. And that's exciting. That's really exciting. I could imagine someone saying everything that you've just said about you. <laughs> yeah? Hmm. Would that be fair? Yeah, well, maybe. I, maybe. Maybe. Uh, one thing that the writer-director said uh, was that he said you're a street fighter and you're kind of a schemer as an actor when you try and win the scene. And he said you, you went around before some scenes with, with Hoffman saying I'm going to kick his butt so that the crew could hear and that he knew Philip Seymour Hoffman could take it. Do you mm. recognise any of that? I mean, are you quite competitive as, as an actor? Um, that entire story is blarney, is the word. <laughs> John does the... John Patrick Shanley, the writer... He does these publicity tours, and the stories get more and more fantastic. <laughs> I never did this. Ask Amy and Viola and Philip. We, we, I think I knitted almost every day, and it drove Shanley crazy, because knitting is a very interesting activity. You don't know what the person's thinking or what they're doing. So he made up this fantastic <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how do you think he would Story. make that up? Yeah. could you just move the, the, the oh the big thing oh, yeah. sorry it's okay. Okay. So, I'm so sorry no no my fault do you want to, me to do any of that again? no, no, no it's fine, fine. Um, um, so uh, anyway I think he did it because he gets bored in the publicity tours you know you go and you speak to 30 people in a day and he just gets I mean, he's told some fantastic whoppers about everybody. You don't mind? <laughs> it's just, I have to go around after him and say, no, I didn't do that. But I, I didn't. <laughs> it's a great story, though. I wish I had. Um, in, in preparing for a role like that, though, and in preparing for all your roles, I mean, is there a kind of approach you take to transform yourself? Particularly in this case, someone who, who is quite a, an unpleasant character. Yes, she is an unpleasant character, but for me the process has to do with um, being her and being in her life. I, make, I do go through a process where I make up sort of her past, and I imagine events in her life that might have affected her, events that m led her to marry early, to get out of the house, events that after her husband died, led her to the convent. Um, I look at the time in which she lived. This takes place in 1964, when for very smart, ambitious women, there were very limited um, opportunities. I remember I was a, 
an eighth grader. I was the, the age of the children in this film at that time. And I had very brilliant women teachers who now would not be teachers because the salary is too low. They'd be lawyers or doctors or business women, um, just because those opportunities weren't, weren't there for women then. So I imagined, I just imagined the whole context of where she exists, how she came to be here. And you read the effect that she's an unpleasant woman. But for me, I'm sort of drawing the road map of how she got to be there. Okay. I'm just thinking of the, the last role that we've seen you in here was Mamma Mia, which is complete contrast. When you made that film, did you have any idea what a success it was, was going to be? Um, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know it would be this kind of a global phenomenon, but I knew people were going to like it. Thirty million people had seen the, the play around the world and loved it. And in a way, I was sure that uh, my cohort would love it, my f <laughs> friends and, and their kids, and yeah, I was sure of that. But I was surprised just really how people have gone nuts over it. I'm glad. It makes me happy. Well, it looked like you had a terrific time shooting it. Was there an element of wanting to do something like this because you hadn't done something like this before in your career? Oh, well, I had. I mean, sad to say, I had done a lot of musicals <laughs> when I was younger. My first play on Broadway was a musical. Uh, I'd always sort of secretly harbored the desire to do something like that, but no one had ever asked me till Philadelphia <laughs> did. And I was really sort of gobsmacked when she came. I couldn't believe that she really wanted me to do it, but they did, so it was great. Do you really like the music of ABBA? I love the music of ABBA. I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wondering, in the process of making it, whether you had met the original writer of the, the stage play. I think it's Katherine Johnson. Um, I hadn't met her before this first meeting, no. Um, did, you, <coughs> did you have a view of what she was trying to do when she created Mamma Mia, what you felt she, her vision of it was? Yeah, well, when I met the three women that were the originators of the stage play, Judy Kramer was its producer, Phyllida was the director, and Katherine Johnson was the <coughs> writer. Um, uh, they, told me, they told me the whole story of the provenance of the thing, how it came to be. And um, I was very touched by just sort of how Judy was so dogged and she had no money. She just saved her, uh, saved up all of her pounds and commissioned a script to uh, weave a story uh, through the ABBA songs. And the script wasn't good, so she waited three more years, saved her money up again, and got another until she found Catherine. And then when that story made sense through the thing, that they went forward. So she was demanding all the way. She's never changed. And that's wonderful. Do you have a favorite film role of all the many that you've done? I don't. I don't. I have some that I like less than others. But uh, just because, well, because I don't love uh, special effects. They're boring. It's boring to make a movie with special effects. You stand around in a green or a blue suit, and uh, <coughs> so the computer can draw your actions or something. So don't understand the technology of it. But it's a yawn to do it. And yeah, that, that stuff I don't love as much. Would that be what an, uh, an action film, or what can you yes, think of? Any, uh, well, no, not a, um, um, Death Becomes Her. Oh, yeah. Was, I mean, it was fun to shoot it with, with Goldie and the director, but there was a lot of technical CGI stuff. So they can get the avatars to do that, as far as I'm concerned. You have um, the, um, a reputation based on your ability to transform to play so much. Um, and of course, you've been nominated many times. Um, does that ever feel like a, a burden to you? Does 
well, being I, I, nominated <laughs> feel like a no. That doesn't feel like a burden. It feels like just a gift and a shock because over a long career you cannot imagine that people still tolerate <laughs> seeing your face, you know, over and over again. And so um, it's a, it's a wonderful thing when people give you approbation that way. But the no, I don't ever feel a burden. My God, how could I feel a burden? <laughs> well, I was wondering at the Golden Globes um, when Kate Winslet won. Um, after she'd been nominated a few times, not won. We all understood that. Um, what did you make of her acceptance speech? Um, well, everyone was. Everyone who ever wins one of these things is very emotional, and you sort of leave yourself behind in the seat. And I remember when I won won the Oscar. I won the Oscar in, oh God, I think it's almost like 30 years ago or something. Um, and I got up and I remembered everyone's name in the film because I I loved this cast and crew so much. And I, I got all the gaffers' names, all the camera crew, the caterer, the prop guys, uh, obviously my co-stars, the director, but I forgot and there were a number of producers. I forgot one of the producers' names. And I was amazed that, um, that I'd gotten everybody else, you know, because I was so, you get so overwrought. You really do. And on the curb afterwards, at, outside the event, this one man came up and said, thanks a lot. And it really meant an enormous amount to him. And I, I felt absolutely terrible. The entire euphoria of winning went away in that moment. And I can't actually say that, you know, I, I wish I were more, uh, that I were tougher. Anyway, I'm just saying that everybody, the, the easiest job is to sit at home on the couch and go, <laughs> what a jerk. You know, look at that. Look, at they don't even know how to get it. Buy one. An Oscar, I would give fantastic expenses. That's how I feel about that. <laughs> okay. Um, just, just looking ahead to, to politics, so Barack Obama named you as one of his favorite actors. How did you feel about that? He did! I didn't know that. He did? Oh my God! I'm going to crush my microphone <laughs> on that information. That's really very cool. I have to tell everybody I know about that. When, uh, when did that happen? Uh, it was uh, just one of the, 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 the oh, things Oh, maybe you said it's in not true. No, it's true. Oh, it's not internet research. Or it is, it's I promise you, he said <laughs> okay. you're one of his favorite actors. That's very, going, very great. I didn't know that. That's I, sorry, cool. I assumed you would. I just wondered what you made of him. Um, I love him. I think he's fantastic. I don't know him. I don't love him, but I just think, I think he is fantastic. I think it's so, and part of it is just the. Bar relief, you know, where we've been, the comparison, a thoughtful person, a person who actually weighs several arguments before coming to a decision, um, who admits dissent, who welcomes it. It's, it's all the things that we've dreamed of for too many years, and it's fantastic. Was there a part of you that, you know, looking back, you wanted? Oh, okay, sorry. Can I just, um, oh, sorry. I think. Um, this was one very last quick one. Oh, yeah. is, um, um, you've spoken in the past about the lack of great roles sometimes mm. for, for older women. You're someone who gets offered great roles. Do you have a view about how Hollywood is and how it treats uh, women actors in general? Yes, I have thousands of theories about this, but it would just take you too much time <laughs> to, to go through it. But basically, I think as women advance, you know, like your job, for instance. When I was 13, there were no women in broadcasting. There was, when Barbara Walters came on to the Today Show and became the co-anchor, her partner quit in protest. It's very hard to imagine that so recently things have changed. But that's true in, um, in everything, uh, in politics, law, medicine, 
science. And it's true in the movies, but it's incrementally coming, and it's slow. And as there are more women in positions to greenlight films, in, in other words, the financial end, then there will be more stories of women told. Right now, the, the stories that are told are the ones that appeal to the people who finance the films, and of necessity, they're fellows' stories. So as the world changes, there will be more. And there is more. I mean, think of it now. I can't believe I'm sitting here uh, having such uh, a long career. I wouldn't have imagined it.